So last week, we talked about what embeddings. So we learned what to vec, and we talked about two models in what to vec. One is that to predict the context words with the center words. The other one is like to, given the center words, to predict all the context words. So we model probability, and then we train on the data. So we learn embeddings. We can of know that the embeddings we learned kind of can present the semantic meanings of these words. So now we, today, we, this is another notebook we didn't cover last week. We, today we talk about how to use the pre-trained embeddings to help you for the NLP task. So in this task, we will talk about sentiment analysis, which means given a piece of text, we want to classify the emotions on this text. Uh, on this text. So in particularly, what we will do here, we use the Amazon review data set. We will classify whether or not a review is positive for the products or negative about the products. So here, we do, what we want to do here, we download data set from Stanford. It's a pretty tiny data set, and which each example is contains one text review of, uh, on Amazon. So you can see that. Like, uh, um, if you download it, uh, you extract it, you will have two folders, uh, very similar to images that I said we have. One's called the train, and one's called test. On the train, there's two subfolders. Like, uh, I, I, maybe, I maybe can show you on the, and maybe you can see directly. Um, yeah, sorry. On the folder, that is, um, so, it, so now this is the folder. So we have a trend and a test folder. Within each folder, we have it called the elective and the positive. Under the elective, well, if you open it, it's like uh, take a long time to open. Uh, well, uh, it contains like 25,000 files. Each file, we have a text data set contains of the text we have. So uh, it's Jupyter via die. If you open it, and let me close. Well, um, well, actually, it costs Jupiter to stop. <laughs> well, lesson learned: you never let Jupiter open a very large file contain a lot of files. Let me restart Jupiter. I just restart Jupiter and. Well, it's, it take, take the whole Chrome <laughs> shutdown. Like, let me just open it. So, okay, here's the lesson. You never open a very large, open lever folder that contains a lot of files in Jupyter. Like, it costs every problem there. Like, uh, Okay, so we can, so the thing is like, for each folder, it's like two classes. For each class, in each folder you have a text file. You, uh, we just read them one by one, and each one contains the home, the very long text data set. So you can see that if you read, I skipped all this code here, and you can, re you can see that like we have 25,000 trainings and 25,000 tests for like, uh, for each one, um, the reviews, like it's a long review, we just print the first few words for the review. You can see that these positive reviews are normally something like, uh, that's a typical review you're gonna see on Amazon. Okay, so this is data. So we, we mentioned that we need to tokenize it, which means given a text, we want to make it into elements. A token here is a word here. And we build the vocabulary, this is the unique word we will keep, and the for low frequency word we just skip. So here, we split, we split by space, so we get token, tokens, and then get the tokens to get a, um, to get a vocabulary, which is the minimum frequency is five. If a word appears less than five, we, we are skipping on this word, on this vocabulary. The other thing we meant, the other thing is that, like a normal text data set, each sequence have different length. So 
Uh, we show how to padding with zeros, like padding a, just a symbol to get the equal length here. So here we do a very simple thing. We pick, we pick the max length to be 500. If a review have less than 500 words, we will adding a specialized token called uh, unknown here. It's actually zero. It's unknown token at, at the end. If it's more than 500, we, we will just uh, remove the last few words here. So by this way, we can, um, we can get a data set contains about um, the number of examples times 500 here. So lastly, we can create data set, like, uh, create data set um, and create their iterator. That's the batch size equal to 64. That is a normal we create data set. We can skip here. And then finally, we just print something. So every time we read a batch, you can see that a batch will be the batch size 64 times 500. So each example 500 length vector present the, uh, present the tokens in the review. And the label itself is just a binary. It's zero for negative, or zero for positive, and one for negative. Okay. So and the number of batches we have is almost uh, about 400. So that's all about data set. Okay, that's a uh, whole, so here's the key thing about the modeling. So what we will use here is a bi-directional ILSTN. So I maybe, uh, let me explain a little bit about the models here. Let me draw something. So we have a bunch of tokens here. I assume we have four tokens in the re reviews. Like uh, I maybe like this one. So what do we will do here, we have embedding layer. We already talked about in the last week, embedding layer to get vectors. So this is embedding layer. So this is single embedding layer, but for different time step. So we got embedding here. So each word we get embedding. Then the embedding will fit into a LSTN layer, like a recondent neural network. Like uh, this, for example, this is LSTN fit into that. It's time, this is time zero to the LSTN, we will have output. The output actually is just the hinder state. And also, like, we, the same thing we are passed to the next time step. So these two guys are equal to each other. So for, if you use an LSTM, we have another one, it's called a cell, which actually have more, more than just a hinder state. It have an additional memory cell. If you use a GRU or like uh, the plan RN, you don't have anything, just two identical. So you pass, this step, you pass this date to the next time step, as uh, here, you will generate another output. Similar thing, this is equal to the state that you pass to the next one and do the thing. And you have output and the final time step. So this one, so this equal also equal to the hinder state. So we know that because the way we pass the hinder state, we know that this hinder state will contain everything about the sequence. So by this way, we map a sequence into a single, a single vector, a fix. Uh, no matter how long the sequence we have, we always project to a vector. Then as normal, we can have a dense layer here to get the, um, the output. The little bit tricky thing, I think Alex already talked about that, is like we're using bi-directional LSTN. I like, so for example, I like this book. If I look on this direction, I see that this, this is, well, you don't know, it. until this point, you don't know this is for what. Like, uh, you need to go this direction, okay, I saw the, I saw the book and know, oh, okay, this is for the book. So the bi-directional LSTN lets you go, also a similar thing, we have actually another cell, but, uh, another cell, but we, I draw that in this here, you go this direction. So this is the initial state. Initial state, this is an initial state. So in this direction, the output I will pick is this one. Like for this one, it's go here. This one go here. So the output will be to a dense layer, will be this guy, the positive direction, the last time step for the positive direction, and the, la the last time step, uh, the zero time step for the opposite direction. And we concat these two guys together, fit into a dense layer. So this is a typical 
our model to do classification. Okay, if you do homework, um, if you have uh, homework doesn't have bidirectional, but uh, that's a typical way how to do if it, if I can do a classification, I can go both direction. Okay, so you can see that, let me show the implementations here. Um, we create embedding here, and the, the embeddings, we have a vocabulary size, and output will be embedding size. Then given number of hidden layers for LSTM, and number of layers, we are using multiple LSTM layers here, and we're using bidirectional equal to two, just give bidirectional thing. And the input size given the embedding size. The last layer uh, is a dense layer. We just give, because we do binary classification, we just create dense layer have two, like we can use a softmax letter. You, could, you can also do one, I use a bin uh, binary logic regression. So we call the encoder and the decoder. We're gonna show you in a minute why you call the encoder and decoder, but you can see that in Letter. So then I can I remove this uh, comments. It's too long. Okay, so what do we do here? We put embedding to here, but we use a, we transpose it. So the input will be batch size equals the, step, uh, the time, which is the 500 dimensions. We need to transpose it because the RN requires the first dimension to be the time step and then batch size. So we're gonna transpose it, and fit into the encoder, get the state, that basically the output, the state is kind of like, uh, it's, it's, it's confusing, it's actually the output. It contains the output for each state, for each time, uh, time step. Then, because of bidirectional, we pick up the first, the first time, which is the opposite direction output, and the last one, this is the positive direction output. I concat them together and fit into the dense layer. Okay, that's all about the model. And fit into the dense layer, and we got output. Okay, so that's all about the model. Um, then training is pretty similar to each other. We pick up the embedding size equal to 100, number, number of hindrance to be 100, and two layers using all the GPUs we have. Uh, we create a bidirectional one, and initialize it. Okay, so here we use the random initializations here. The key step here, we are, we are, we are going to use pre-trained water vectors. So the thing we will use here is a globe trend on two billion words, and the output dimension size is 100 dimension. So we need to guarantee that the 100 equals to the number of the embedding size here. Because we pick up 100, we can only use pre-trained models like for 100 dimension, okay? Then we download these models. Next, because this model trends on the Wikipedia, it have a more, more, lot of wo uh, more words than what we have here. So what do we do here? We have the vocabulary based, built based on the sentiment data set. We give them all the tokens we have, put the tokens into the embedding, and then get a vector of, of this, all the tokens. So you can see that like, uh, the embedding size will be this number by 100. Okay, this is the word, so this is the embedding, only contains the word will be used on this data set. So, so because the embedding usually have much more words than we have before. So we here, we only select some words. The last thing we do is here, because we have embedding here, we just have the weight, the set data, uh, set data just to replace the random initialized the weight we have before. The, the additional thing we do here we just set, set the parameters, the embedding layer, set the parameters, um, require gradients to be known. I just don't compute the gradients. So we, we, which means we will not update the embedding layer. We're just using this embedding layer for feature instruction. Okay. Now we can train it. Um, training, so because we're using fine tuning, as, as very similar to what we have for images before, we use a very tiny learning rate here. This is 0 0.01, tiny learning rate, and using a number of epoch, like five, usually mostly enough. Um, like if you are a large data set, you can even like maybe only one or two pass of the data set. So we set up the learning rate, which get a trainer, and using a soft max cross entropy loss. 
it is a binary classification. You can use a binary uh, like a softmax, uh, binary logic regression loss. But here, for general purpose, if you, in case you want to do multi-class text classification, you, we use softmax here. So here, you can see that we train on two GPUs, and the losses decreases. And the thing, because we are using fine tuning here, actually the training accuracy is not so bad at beginning. Even after one, like a epoch you get like decent test accuracy. Then the accuracy increases, and you can see that training increases more than like for test. That's because the embedding already give you very good features at the beginning. So um, libid training, which can give very, a very good test accuracy. But like because we use two layers LSTM here, actually the model is pretty complex. So we have a tiny data set so we're just overfitting the data set. You can see that the training accuracy d increases more frequent, uh, more fast than the test accuracy. And we only do five epochs here. If you do 10 epochs, you maybe reach out to 99% of accuracy. This is like, <laughs> uh, this is overfitting. So for, to solve overfitting, yeah, you can a lot of ways to do things like, uh, here we just simply just early stopping. We just stop af after five epochs. Or we can use a tiny, even smaller learning rate, you can use a large like weight decay to all this, uh, to do overfitting. And finally, like to predict uh, sentiment, uh, to predict the test, what do we do here? A given a sentence, we split and fit into a sentence, and fit into the network and do, so, uh, do the, uh, get the, up, the dense output, uh, apply a softmax, we will get the results. That is, if, we do a uh, argmax. If equal to one, we call it positive. Equal to zero, we call it negative. So that is normal way we do, like for density as output, how to predict. Okay. So you can see that. So example, this movie is so great, like it's positive. This movie is so bad, it's negative. Okay. So because we didn't run that, I cannot show you like put another sentence to see the dog. See the one because the train itself is not so easy because we restart the Jupiter. I, I lost all the state and because each time take 40 seconds to run. I, I will not run here, like take uh, three minutes. So the whole idea for this one is to, for text the classification, given a different length of sequence. So the R model will give you, no matter how long the sequence you have, I always give you a single vector because I just pick up, one, pick up the output of one time step. And the other thing that we, sh we can usually using the what to vec train or large scale data set as a good feature structure for our own work. It's very similar to what we're doing for fine tuning for CNNs. We always pick up uh, um, CNN train or ImageNet as a base model for feature structure for here. But the difference here is that, well, we only do the what to vectors. So we have low, very low level feature structure, feature presentation. They're still using RN to get a sequential information. But for CNNs, we just get the whole image spa spatial information and just do a uh, final like a dense layer to get other things. So a little bit different. And so we maybe, we are cover maybe next week, we'll talk about BERT. Uh, you can, BERT can give you, can give you a pre model to present the whole document. But now what embedding only present the whole words, it's individual words. Okay, that's all about this like uh, application, any questions so far? Okay. <laughs>